If you know what this logo means, you too might be entitled for financial compensation. Just putting that out there. Hi, hello, my name is Tiana. Welcome back to my channel. It, it's the last day of 21 besties. How are we feeling? Leave down a highlight of this year in the comments down below. My highlight was being able to chat with all of you and finishing another successful semester of university. As always, my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads are linked down below. And if you want to support me and my channel, I have an Amazon wish list if you want to send me a book. And my GoFundMe, Tell Me Finish School, are down there also. <laughs> Let's get into my least favorite reads of 2021, shall we? I think this might surprise some of you. I was so looking forward to this book, I waited, what, two years to read this 800-page monolith of smut. <laughs> and here we are a few months later, and I still feel the same way I did when I finished it, if not worse. Um, and that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This book follows Nesta after A Court of Wings and Ruin, and if you have read A Court of Cloth and Starlight, you would have known that this book was going to follow Nesta pretty closely in regards to her assholery and her trauma. We find out why she is the way she is after her trauma that she experienced, and we get to explore more Nesta and her personality at the cost of adding more face and concept face and content, goodness gracious. I was not a fan of this. I did like the part at the end where they say I love you. I like that, that was cute. And of course, we love a good smut, you know, that that was given. I was mad and I'm upset that I was deprived of an Eiffel Tower. I, I love a good Eiffel Tower and I'm pissy, you know? So I'm just gonna take a shot now. Ugh. This book was in my books I read on hiatus video and for the same reasons I'm gonna state now. I didn't like the casual racism. I did not like the casual homophobia. This book is slow, and I wish there was more payoff. We follow our main character. She has been offered um, admission to the School of Her Dreams, Ivy League, all that jazz, and it's hard for her to find a job, and her parents are like, well, let's go back home. So they go back home, and she is then haunted by her grandmother's ghost. And the tagline was ghosts, gods, and demons. And I was expecting more of the mythology, but it was all told through the grandma's perspective. There was no learning curve. It, it The pacing, again, is just slow, and we, we get no payoff. It, it's, it's based on a story that we're told, and the story is then told again through a main character. And it's just like, okay saw that coming a mile away. And that is Blackwater Sister and it, it didn't meet my expectations and it wasn't worth the hype. Don't fight me. Take it to the altar and pray about it. My third least favorite read of this year was one of our reads for the Vintage Books and Wine Club. We have a whole live show on this book. If you want a more in-depth reason as to why this book was just meh instead of oh my god, I will link it in the cards above. That is Honey Girl. The vibes were not felt. They were not matched. I know this is a lot of people's favorite book of 2021, and unfortunately, it's just, she's just not that girl, and I'm so sorry. I do think that the depiction of um, having a military parent is accurate. I, I have one of those. For character arcs and development and the, the you know, spritz of romance, it was just, I got a solid two, okay? My fourth least favorite read this year is going to have to be A Touch of Malice, the long-awaited, overhyped third book in a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, I waited a while for this book, I think, like maybe a few months, and that's a while for me because it's a Kindle Unlimited book. I'm used to binging those, so waiting was different. That was new. For the same reason I didn't like the second book, we're having the same problems in the second book of Persephone being impulsive enough, making things through, making these heavy duty promises to her spouse, and then breaking those promises. And the only time we see Hades in this book is when they're having sex. There's no like relationship development. There's no growth as a partnership. It's just her rebelling because she feels left out and she wants to, um, you know, teach a god a lesson. And I just, I'm, I'm sick of it. You know, either step into your power or shut the fuck up. And also, we're adding in more diverging plot lines when we're straying from the one true path of our mom is mad at us. So I don't know what's going on there. We'll see what happens in the fourth book. And then author St. Clair is also releasing Hades POV books. And I think they're more interesting because he's a more complex character and she can show him as a baseline and like how he 
maneuvers his way into having Persephone as life. Whereas Persephone is just stagnant, stale, and impulsive. I don't like that. My last book, number five, my least favorite, topping this all off, is gonna have to be Kingdom of the Wicked. I love Italy, okay? Ipadon Potriano. I have studied Italy, I've studied Italian, I'm very familiar with the southern continent, La Cosa Nostra, like I love Italy. And I think this book depicted the gothic southern Cosa Nostra Italy that I was envisioning, okay? Cool, great. However, there are no feelings of consequences or urgency in this book. I think that once we figure out a linear plot progression and once we figure out well th th there's a second book so i'm not even gonna read the second book if i'm being honest but once we figure out like where this series is going <laughs> and what's happening which is supposed to be the first book's job i was not interested this book has um triggers for sexual assault because he takes advantage of her and her right to say no and i'm just not seeing what the impressionable teenagers are seeing with this series so it was enough for me dog sorry so that wraps up my least favorite reads of 2021 let me know did any of these make your list and you know what's on your list let a gal know in the comments down below um so now on to my best books of 2021 um this was a good reading year for me i had taken maybe a year off of reading from my freshman year of college because freshman year of college i worked my ass off and then that was fall semester spring semester we were home <laughs> and I did not a lick of reading but I wanted to and then in the summer of 2020 I got more into reading around June um and I didn't get like into like my good reading year until this year like I found the like, good stuff um in no particular order I'm just going in the way these books are stacked in front of me let's get into that um <laughs> this should not be a shocker um first we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid I adored this book I think um, there are trigger warnings if you are a child of divorce there is a lot of like grief of an under loss of a parent an absentee parent who only feels validation when he wants to feel validated as a parent I love this book like we go into our main character make her name's Nina and she's trying to go through her divorce within all of the day and she is um, then combated with her mom in the 1960s I believe where her mom and her father are going through a lot of shit. <laughs> I don't want to go too much into that. It's a Taylor Jenkins read novel. Like you're, you're gonna cry maybe, you're gonna feel some emotions, and it's gonna be um, a, a time piece. This was in the 1980s. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I, I cannot recommend this enough. I think if you want to read this book, have a, a book to read to make you feel happier afterwards, most definitely. So this was a vintage books and wine club pick it was a february pick for black history month it is the award-winning novel that keeps receiving awards and keeps getting recognition i have someone on my twitter feed right now who's rereading it and i'm jealous because i just want to reread this book for the first time and just experience all of it in one go <laughs> um that is legend born by tracy dion i am so proud of you tracy like thank you so much for giving people who look like me on the cover and people who sound like me reading the audiobook we have our main character brie she's doing a like um dual enrollment program sort of kind of over the summer at university of north carolina chapel hill and some shit's going down it's an authorian retelling and i don't want to give too much away but i just I, I love this book so much because i wish i had this book when i was brie's age okay that was many many moons ago here we are now and i'm just like i want to protect you at all cost but you're gonna go through some shit in july um the sequel comes out july something if 2022 that is too goddamn long but alas we're gonna have to wait anyway i cannot recommend this book enough okay go pick it up i don't think you will regret it i love authorian retellings i love brie so much and i'm just i'm team cell on this one okay give me a moody teenager any day and i will i will pick him okay i waited years for this book okay actual years for this book susan dinner which uh, I have a whole book talk on this. It's a perfect continuation of a storyline that keeps progressively getting better and it progressively makes sense. The puzzle pieces are fitting. I love what's going on right now. I'm so happy that Azul's got her own book. I'm so happy that the story is progressing. Please, I cannot stress this enough. Go pick this series up. You will not regret it. And it's becoming a show, so 
be on the bandwagon now because I will catch you a mile away if you join the bandwagon a little too late. I'm watching you. Next up is Rage of Dragons. I enjoyed my time and experience with this book so much. Um, there was a bathtub scene, there was a revenge plot, which I'm very skeptical skeptical of revenge plots. Tao is mad that his daddy's dead. So he's trying to get into the regime, he's trying to get his way up to the ranks so he can avenge his father, and he's learning the way of the underworld and the demon realms, and I'm just enjoying myself so much in this world. Unfortunately, the third book doesn't come out until like 2022, 2023 I think, so I'm holding off on the sequel. I think Mina started it, so I'll see if they liked it, but here we are with this se series. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen then because this was a good introduction to a fantasy world based on West African culture. Please, let me know if you've read it so we can discuss because I thoroughly enjoy myself and my experience with this book. I read this book over the summer audiobook was phenomenal. I want more from this author and she is writing more. I'm so excited and happy for her. I think this should, this book was optioned for film or for a TV show. Not sure but I expect nothing but good things from this author and from the show and that is We Hunt the Flame. It's, it's a quest to save magic. I don't know what else you could want from a fantasy book. It's a desert fantasy. I, I, I don't know what else to explain. Like there's found family, there is a quest for magic. There's a boy who's been hurt by his dad. He's lost his mom. We have a girl who's lost her dad and she witnessed her mom killing her father. Like there's just so much oh, like swelling of emotions in this book. I need you all to read it so we can discuss and hurt together, okay? I am looking at this book right now and I am just, I want to cry. I think Helen Huang put her heart into the heart principle. Like y you just feel the sense of like trueness and being selfless and being like your own person exploring that after you have a diagnosis and our main character, she gets diagnosed with autism and it just hits her like a full on truck and seeing the way she blossoms into her own person and just to like there, there's this one chapter or there's, there's this one paragraph where she's like I, I'm so mad at myself for needing a diagnosis to just be me and accept the way that I am for who I am and to love myself yo that hit hard um this is a romance book but I would say it is a literary fiction book there is a hint of romance yes if you want romance go read a kiss quotient by Helen Huang I am just it's, it's, it's an own voices book and you feel Helen Huang's voice in this book and I don't want to say anything else. Please go pick it up. This book had to be on this list, okay? I got to not only meet the author and um, tweet at her on Twitter and send her some cute cheetah girl memes. She also wrote a killer book. She is a New York Times bestselling author and I think she's only 23, which I'm just like, girl, girl, I am so proud of you. You're going to do amazing things. I'm so excited for her next book to come out. Um, she's just that girl. And that is Apes of Spades by Fredai Abike Abide. I'm so proud of you. I thank you for sending me an arc. Thank you for letting me be on your street team. Just thank you for this book that feels so true and yet it's it, it's it's a work of fiction, but yet it's it's scary because the reality of a society being like this is possibly real. I live in the South. My neighbors have the Confederate flag outside waving about. There's a guy who rides his motorcycle in my apartment complex and it's decked out in Confederate flags. And having this book was like a warm blanket of like, I know, I see you, and if we're together, there's nothing stopping us. So I have a book discussion discussing everything. I did a live show with Chanel from um, Chanel Time and Fiction Fate, so I will link that down below. And just please, I I think people will understand what it's like being a black person in America. Like you, you just feel claustrophobic living in America and I think this book really exemplifies what that feeling feels like. So yeah, I, I, I enjoyed myself with this book. Let's do this one. Yeah, so Atlas 6. I read this in a day. I mean, it, it's relatively short, yes, but the font is kind of small. Olive Blake is self-published and she really did that with this book. It got picked up by Tor or by Penguin. I'm not sure. Don't fight me on this. 
and it's optioned for film by Amazon. Like, it's getting a sequel. I am so happy that this book is getting the praise it deserves. I feel like if you're not a character-driven person, you're not gonna like this book. It is very character heavy and just the sexually questioning characters that are so infuriatingly smart and yet they are all equally stupid in the way of human interaction. I, I, I don't know what else to say about this book. It is so dark academia. Like if dark, ac if you Google dark academia in a book, <laughs> If you Google Dark Academia, this book will pop up. It, it, it's the first image you see. And I want everyone to experience what I experienced the, the last minute, like uh, 360. Olivia Blake said, foot on the gas, no pit stops. And I just, I, I appreciate it so freaking much. I, I need everyone to go read this. Like that's no question. You have to read it now because you have to be part of the bandwagon, okay? There's a wagon. The, the wagon departs once the cast for the series on Amazon Prime comes out. There's no question about that, so you better hop on it now. Also, I think the paperback, you can't buy it anymore because the publisher wants you to buy their copy and, you know, rightfully so. So I will be owning two copies of this book because this is an original. The, 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 this is the OG print. I'm gonna own both of the prints. I felt like a bad bitch. God damn. Okay, next book. This book was beautiful my heart aches for it's, it's not even found family it's kind of like you deserve each other but instead of a marriage it's a family it's like you know repairing like a familiar relationship our main character orchidea she comes from a very complex family where she feels unloved and invisible and that's very much so and then she finds a husband who is in the circus but he then becomes a cheater essentially and she's like I want out I need out and she finds this star and he grants her powers and she's able to leave and she's supposed to give back what was promised she never did so the inheritance of Orchidea Davina is given to her grandchildren and her children and a spooky spooky man is coming to collect their inheritance some people have been dying and it, we explore what it means to open up and search deep inside i don't know what else i can say about this book i just know that i had a great time it was so beautifully written i think the first act you have to have it or the second act doesn't pay off all that well. And it paid off so beautifully and exquisitely. The audiobook was just so dreamscape-like and it was so peaceful and yet you really go into some hard topics in this book. I just, there's a reason why. There's a reason why this book is on this list. And you need to go figure out why, okay? If you read it, you know. If you haven't, go find out. That brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much for all the support for this past year. Thank you so much for the comments, the the, the tweets, the DMs, the, the books you've all sent me. It's been so wonderful. I feel so loved and appreciated. Um, hopefully I can you know, give back and keep the steam going by keep creating content for you all. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I look forward to seeing you in 2022 and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. If you know what this logo means, you too might be entitled for financial compensation. Just putting that out there.